So, Kim, I'm gonna have you try a little amateur forensic work here. I've collected fingerprints from a few of our colleagues, and what you see here is four fingerprints I took, two of which are from the exact same finger. So I wanna see if you can match which two prints are from the same finger. This is Explainer Club, where video producers like me sit down and explain something to one of our coworkers. And today, that is Kim. I'm a video producer, and I work on primarily health and science content. And I do history, culture, and sometimes science videos. So, I think A and B. That's my first guess. And that's just because I see this like little swirl coming up. And these two just look so different, because you have like this little hump down here. I think I still want to say A and B are the same. Okay. I feel like I completely blew that. No, no, no. I feel like the okay are, was are, a little like... You are... <laughs> no. The answer was A and C. Oh, shoot. They're both from the left thumb. So what is interesting to me about this, though, is all of these fingerprints are from the same person. Oh. I think we all know every person has their own fingerprint. Right. But I didn't know before I started working on this that each individual finger on your hands is different from each other. Did you know that? Like they're completely different? Police practice, when you get fingerprinted, they'll take all 10. That makes sense, yeah. But that makes it seem like it's so much harder to actually identify if a fingerprint belongs to a person if every single one is different. Right. Without this full reference, you wouldn't be able to match one fingerprint to another and say this came from the same hand or even the same person. But there is this new AI tool that says it can do it. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, cool, yeah. Cool, then we're gonna probably run the logo there. Logo. Okay, I'll show you something else. This is a copy of the actual fingerprinting card that the FBI uses. This one is kind of a practice for me. I learned while making this video that taking someone's fingerprint, if you're not trained to do that, is actually kind of hard. Did it work? No, I think I f***ed it up. <laughs> the FBI's fingerprint archive currently houses around 165 million fingerprint records, and they start on these cards. So if you're arrested for a crime in the US, you will get your fingerprints taken by the police, and they're stored on file even if you're not proven guilty. So if you flip this over, these are the three main patterns used to classify fingerprints. The arch, whirl, and loop. Okay, I feel that you should have given me this before First. the quiz, Coleman. I feel I wasn't prepared. Okay, that is fair. But no, this is cool. So the ridges in an arch pattern come from one side of the fingertip and then exit out the other side. Mm -hmm. Then a whirl spirals into a center point, and a loop comes from one side of the finger and then back out the same side. This little bottom part's like an arch, right? And this is a loop, because this is coming back this way? Yeah, exactly. Not a lot of whirls going on. Is whirl more rare? It's kind of in the middle. About 60% of people have loops. That's the most common. Whirl is considered like around 35%. And then arches are actually very rare. Oh, interesting. These general categories are really just for classification. Actually analyzing and matching an individual fingerprint is in the minutia the little breaks and splits along each individual ridge, not the overall pattern. And the most common markings are when you follow a ridge and it ends, that's called a ridge ending. And then if you follow along a ridge and it splits into two, that's called a bifurcation. There's an island, which is like that little dot. When a ridge splits, but then quickly rejoins, it's called a lake. And then that's a bridge connecting two ridges. So analysts will basically just go ridge by ridge and mark these details. And that is where uniqueness in fingerprints really comes from. Not even identical twins who have matching DNA have matching fingerprints when you get to the minutia. So the minutia is how analysts have been matching fingerprints for more than a century. Is that coming from outside factors? Like it's not genetic anymore. Like if I burn my finger or something like that, is that where most of minutia yeah. is from? That's a great question. It doesn't come from your lifetime. I'm just thinking of like Men in Black where Will Smith has to like grab the thing and it just burns his fingerprints off. The one you encounter. That would be hard to actually do. It's very hard to get rid of your fingerprints and they don't change over your lifetime. They're actually tiny ridges of tissue under your skin. Oh. They're called friction ridges. Even if you've burned off your fingertips, your palms, your other joints, they're all equally unique because they have the same friction ridges. So I want to show you something on my computer. By the time you're born, your fingerprints are already set. So they form in the womb. Their pattern begins with some genetic influence from your parents as a shape in the center, the fingertip, and top of your first knuckle. The ridges grow from there in waves, following what's called a Turing pattern. This is a concept proposed by Alan Turing in the 1950s that helps explain other unique patterns in nature, like how a leopard gets its spots, how a zebra gets its stripes, and sand dunes. That's pretty. It's beautiful. And so what I want to show you is there are actually some cool simulators online that can kind of give you an idea of how a Turing pattern, how they work. Oh, that's so fun. 
Oh, it looks like a brain, that's creepy. These waves and, and the way they merge and collide ends up with a unique pattern. So I want to ask you about the video that you made about how our voice is like a fingerprint too. As humans, each of us produces a sound that's about as unique as a fingerprint. So the whole point of that video was to just explain the amount of things that go into producing your voice. Your nasal cavity, your tongue, your vocal cords have different thicknesses and lengths. There's just so many minuscule little factors that will just change how you sound. And therefore we went with why your voice is like a fingerprint. People in the comments were just like, actually, Fingerprints are not unique. The thing is, is like, we can't prove it. I think maybe that's what they mean. I could see the doubt and I've seen questions online. Like if they didn't take everybody's fingerprint, how do they know they're all unique? It's a probability issue, especially the way these things form under our skin, which is truly random. And there's just so many data points in here that it was estimated even at sort of towards the beginning in the history of fingerprinting, the odds of having the exact same pattern when you get down to the minutia are like one in 64 billion. And I think that people feel comfortable enough saying that no two fingerprints are alike. But about a year ago, that might have changed. I'm gonna play a clip from a phone interview that I did uh, okay. recently. This is a transcript of what you're about to hear. Take a listen to this. My name is Hard Lipstead. I'm a roboticist, AI researcher here at Columbia, and I uh, have nothing to do with forensics, fingerprints, anything like that. Once you understand AI, you can apply it to taking a fresh look at some hard problems, and this is one of them. What he's talking about is this study published in Science Advances that one of his students was the lead author on that claims to have trained in AI to identify whether a pair of fingerprints came from the same person or not. So what they did was feed pairs of fingerprints, sometimes from different different people, sometimes the same person but different fingers, into the AI and ask a simple question. Same person or two different people? And so he found the data set, which was a set of about 60,000 fingerprints from, I think, mostly from deceased people. This is a public data set. He set up the AI again on a fancy AI and had it look at this. And lo and behold, he was able to do it fairly effectively, which led us to ask more questions like, how are you doing it? What are the features you're using? And the AI shows you, and it's looking at fingerprints in a completely different way than humans. It found similarities to pretty successfully identify whether it was the same person or not. How does it do that? I want to show you what it was looking at. Instead of examining the minutia, like a human analyst does, the machine focused on the subtle curve shape and different angles of ridge lines in the center of the fingerprints. So what this chart is basically showing is when it examined a raw image, the machine was right about 80% of the time when asked the question, same person or different people. And even when you removed a lot of the detail, including the minutia, and you were left with just this orientation, it was still right about 75% of the time. So it doesn't need the minutia. And in fact, when they did just the minutia and removed all other details, it was the least effective. It was around 60%, which is not much better than a random guess. That's just to examine if the prints came from the same person or not. To match an exact fingerprint to an exact fingerprint, you would still need the minutia. There's been some pushback from experts in the field of forensics about the study who say the paper alone won't change the way we interpret fingerprints. And the authors themselves acknowledge that there's more research that needs to be done. We took it as far as we can using the public data sets, but I'm sure if the FBI wanted to do this, they could do a much better job. But a slightly deeper the other issue is uh, discoveries that we've been looking at fingerprints, perhaps we're missing a lot of information because we were overlooking things like curvature and things that AI suggests are actually very meaningful. It gives us a new language to look at fingerprints. A general optimistic view of AI that I hope to have is how it can teach us to see new things and also just in the field of medical diagnostics to be able to catch things like tumors or cancers and like how much we can use machine learning to improve the lives of people. I asked you to do a little bit of homework. I was wondering if you had any thoughts just on that general big picture. Idea. Yeah, the interesting thing about AI is that typically when we're reading about it or talking about it or everything, there's this like huge future of work thing that comes up where they're just like, the robots are going to replace us. And I kind of like this other lens that came up when I started looking into you, it asked me to look into like the medical field specifically. One quote that I saw more than once was that AI is not going to replace the doctor, it's going to replace the doctor that doesn't use AI. The idea there being that doctors will just evolve with this technology and they will start using it to help advance themselves diagnosing things like cancers. How much more quickly can we work in a crisis if we have a machine next to us eliminating the problems? These tools raise so many questions. I think we're trained to kind of take a really cynical approach with most of them. Yeah. But the idea that it's just we can learn from the machine too, I like that back and forth. 
I like that version of things. <laughs> I like that too. That makes me feel better about the machines. Thanks for watching. We wanted to do something different with this video, to take our standard explainer video and see what happens when we lay out the explanation in a room with another person. For this video, that meant doing a lot of my After Effects and design work, which is usually the last thing I do, early on while I researched and wrote the video. And then instead of doing multiple takes in a VO booth, shooting the whole thing in one go and hoping it goes well. We've been so focused on the minutia, this, or minutiae, minutia. I think it's minutiae, but... Kim, I should have shown you the basic fingerprint patterns before the quiz. I'm sorry about that. But the point of this video was the same as always, to answer questions about our world and to show you the most interesting things we find in a way that's hopefully fun to watch. If you want to support that, you can do that at box.com slash memberships. If you're already a member, thank you so much. You're a big part of the reason that we get to do this at all. See you next time.